This is where all the coffee start. Coffee is more or less in vogue. All the world people, they, they need to drink coffee. They see what they feel. They're surprised. They're surprised. They're surprised. They're surprised. Our coffee doesn't have that usual flavor that I'm used to. And led the mayor of Jiayi County to do the lottery choosing. Most people just aren't aware that Taiwan grows coffee. It's a rare chance for us to buy a good quality Taiwan coffee. If we can sell enough, then we have no future. Well, for traditional coffee shop, I think Taiwanese coffee bean, the price is way too high. This is typical. For me, I, I think this is a very popular kind of taste. So today, we're going to cut uh, 16 samples. I'm really happy to see a group of people dedicate their life to get Taiwan coffee known internationally. In Chinese culture and in a lot of Asian cultures in general, we have a tea drinking tradition. Tea is really the go-to drink in Taiwan. In recent years, with the third wave uh, of specialty coffee culture, um, coffee is more or less in vogue. Coffee is now the fashionable drink, and a lot of the younger generations are turning to coffee instead of tea. Young people don't like tea. So maybe now coffee is better, is a, a better financial planet. Taiwan farmers has been growing coffee for more than 100 years. The first documented coffee tree in Taiwan is in 1884. It's introduced by an English businessman. Taiwan is actually located at the north part of the coffee belt growing zone. So the growing attitude in Taiwan will change the quality a lot. Taiwan, we have a lot of hill and the mountain, and they all face to the different directions. So even like, a, like a, another farm, maybe let's say like a 700 meter away from this place, they can have a total different conditions. When the temperature is like too high, the coffee tend to have more spice uh, uh, flavor, tend to have because the, the disease and the, the insect damage is stress, so they will tend to have more defense uh, chemicals to produce more bitterness. Okay, it's natural. And with the higher altitude, with the lower temperature, it's natural they will have like higher acidity relatively lower bitterness. So it's not all the areas in Taiwan are suitable to growing coffee. It's very similar to Hawaii coffee. Um, the, uh, most of it is a typical variety that actually originally came from Hawaii a hundred years ago. Um, it's you know relatively kind of in the subtropical area or the very north part of the tropics um, at fairly modest elevations. And I mean, the, the overall cup profile is fairly similar to um, traditional Hawaiian uh, coffees. Coffee is a very important industry in Taiwan. I'm very interested and fascinated to hear that Taiwan are also producing. I've not seen any uh, Taiwanese coffee here, but I, it's only a matter of time. A lot of country people, just like, like Americans, like uh, uh, the, the Europe, they, they are so curious about the coffee beans the flavor in Taiwan. Most people just aren't aware that Taiwan grows coffee. In Taiwan, normal Taiwanese could have no idea about this, about how we are so special in the consumption culture side. Uh, Taiwan is for growing teas. We have our atmosphere, the, the environment, the soil, and the weather are great for tea. And then coffee is pretty new in Taiwan. And um, our land is not high enough, so our coffee doesn't have that usual flavor that I'm used to. 
Chinese coffee start from here in Gukeng. When I interview a lot of coffee farmers in Taiwan to ask them where their first coffee tree coming from, they always tell me about Shan. They just pick, it, pick them and because they are free, a lot of wild coffee, you can just look at it uh, yeah, everywhere. His father, the grandfather Leo, he's uh, doing the co in the coffee business as well. He plants some coffee trees, uh, harvest uh, some coffee, and uh, as well he bought the green coffee from the uh, uh, farmers in the neighborhood. So after he purchased the green coffee, he's doing his own roasting job and the grinding job and the packing job. And uh, after the package, he sells the coffee in the market. He started his plantation 20 years ago. After uh, Ethan came back to join the, the, the farm, before he was doing the production things only. But after he come, come to join it, before he, he sent his coffee to other roaster to roast. So the roasting quality depends on other roaster. But now it's the Ethan, it's a, he, 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 he roasts, he packs, and even have the coffee shop to sell and the brand. And the brand, so it's not just the the the, pro, the, the, the agriculture product. It is a brand. Ali Shan Coffee in Taiwan is among the most famous. I actually find that Ali Shan they, I would say, produce the best coffee in Taiwan. I think because of the area, if the climate, the attitudes, everything is kind of so perfect. It remind me of the, the everything in Panama. At Panama, they have the best coffee in the world. Alishan tends to be the, the higher area that has a little bit more acidity to those coffees. It, it's one of the attributes that the international market generally uh, prizes is a higher acidity and a higher complexity of aroma and flavor. What's the difference in taste compared to other regions? They'll be sweeter and more fruity, more vivid compared to other regions in Taiwan. Some people say the tea that's been grown in that region yeah. affects the taste of the coffee, is that? Uh, no, it's not accurate. They grow a lot, the, the land, they grow a lot of things before, like bitterness in the fruits and tea. But I think something really helps them is their experience from the tea. Because the tea tree is like hard to take care, but they are survivors. They survive from the tea tree industries, and now they do the coffee. They put into the same efforts and the knowledge and technology and take up the coffee trees. And that's why, that's also I will agree that how that, that helps the coffee industry a lot.想说转做种咖啡豆现在台湾咖啡来讲的话像我们这样种植咖啡的农民其实也是越来越多那目前的阶段我其实从三年前回来接父亲这个产业开始就是种植端的这个产业开始那我其实这几年一直是在研究一些
Geisha is one of the luxury variety all around the world. Geisha varieties. It's a very unique variety. It's so easy to be recognized. People are crazy for the high quality coffee. They may thinking about Geisha.、Uh, nowadays, our Taiwanese coffee farmers they start to plant lots of Geisha to fit our needs of a specialty coffee. 其实像我们现在世界比较知名的一个品种就是 Geisha， 哎，就是意记这个品种。那这个品种在世界上它是竞标金额是最高的，那能够把这个品种种出比较好的风味的国家其实没有很多。那在我们台湾阿里山这个地方，像我们也有种植 Geisha 这个品种。Geisha has a very different and unique tasting note. I can actually taste the floral notes, and it's very unusual. It's not a creamy coffee. It's very thin. It's very light. It's most like a, when you're drinking a cup of tea. It's a very limited body, but it still, in general, it, it tastes very good. Oh, Ali San Auction focuses only on the coffees produced in Ali San. After a rigorous copying session that's held, there will also be an auction with physical bidders present, and the coffees are sold to local buyers. In front of me, there are like、uh, I would say like 100 of the buyers. They are all from all everywhere in these countries coming to buy Ali San coffee. So now they are evaluating the dry fragrance. So now we that we just see the the staff just grind the coffee freshly, and the people just see the they are smelling the evaluating the dry fragrance. Some people just smell it and and bite it. So now they are going to do the ocean for Geisha. The farmers they don't want to make the coffee become the super expensive, to nobody can buy it. So they just make the pricing for the very reasonable price. And also, they use the lottery system to choose who has the right to buy the coffee, and let the mayor of Jiayi County to do the lottery choosing, and they are choosing the the winner has the right to buy the coffee. It's a rare chance for us to buy a good quality Taiwan coffee, so we、uh, come here early, very early in the morning,、uh, to ensure that we.、Uh, Have a test on the、uh, sample. Decided to、uh, buy this two. Ali Shan coffee evaluation is finished now. They sell the coffee per kilo is about the three thousand Taiwan dollar per pound. If we keep improving our quality and the famous, we can make a Taiwan become a global name of the coffee origin. Ali San has very good terroir for coffee cultivation, but we also saw coffees from other regions, you know, that score very well at the local and the international copying. Other than Ali Shan,、uh, we still have other、uh, regions that produce good specialty coffee in Taiwan. Coffees that are more from、um, Pingtung and Hualien, or maybe a little bit,、uh, a little bit less acidity, and actually very similar in profile to the classic Wash Kona coffees from Hawaii. My husband, he has a dream to improve his village. I choose to plant coffee be- coffee trees here, and offer some working opportunity to our people. It's for something we feel what we need to do for our hometown. This building is an old elementary school. They didn't use it, and I will try to、uh, rebuild.、Uh, Take care of this area to do another things about coffee. He don't want to wasting the land. He th- he thought maybe coffee is a good quality、uh, plant because all the world people they they need to drink coffee. Before you grew coffee, this there was no coffee here. No. What what was here before? Just nothing. People in the village, what do they think about you growing coffee? The lab because I am doctor. They 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 say I always have money to spend this、uh, to do these things. They they think I am crazy. But after six years, I attend coffee bean comp competition in Hualien. I I got number one, number three. So they 
just uh, exchange their mind. I want to ex uh, exchange this area to be a coffee village. That's my will. Oh, in a few years ago, this is the Jiuo Yi Great Wall. That we have three blocks here, it's just a wall. There's no one can do anything. We have to do something. 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 然后呢，就需要我们再种看看，然后开始推广。还没想到一种啊，就是在古风咖啡就一炮而红了。My father says、uh, the key problem is、uh, how much beans we can sell. Uh, because 我们的产量在附近的地区算是很大，而且很稳定。就是可能可以帮我翻译。Even though if we can sell enough. Then we have no future. That's、uh, the only thing he worry about. We are local coffee. Taiwan coffee. This is Zhongpei. You can drink. Our coffee. We test. You can. You can test a little bit of tea test and a little bit of fruit sweet. Fruit sweet too. So our coffee. If you try, you can find. Uh, hui gan. They are not sour, so uh, many Taiwanese uh, will like our coffee because they are、uh, a little bit scared of Xuan Yingan Si. Welcome to our coffee farm. Uh, we are Shidun Coffee Farm. So we from the start of the year, the first 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 year, For example,、uh, the the worker is very hard to find.、Uh, people are really old,、uh, to、uh, too old to、uh, to do these、uh, hard things. So this one of the difficult things, and uh, uh, selling is another difficult things. So yes, we have confidence, but、uh, we also worry about a lot of things. The most significant difference between Alishan and other region is Alishan develop a very good community, very good、uh, atmosphere. That、uh, I think they have the honor to collaborate, to work on the best coffee in Taiwan,、uh, very, <laughs> very closely. And for other region, they can make very good coffee, but I think the community is hard. 界有三大品种，我们可以看到有阿拉比卡，对，那有这个叫罗布斯塔。另外，我们后面这个。So this place is a they they don't commercialize the robusta and the arabica, but he plan here to let people to let the coffee lovers to to compare the different different coffee trees here. 他们看到是什么样感觉？惊讶，惊讶 ，very surprised。对，耶。是我从那个。正鲁那边哦、oh, ，On the Arabica they have a lot of varieties like、uh, Tipica. The oldest here is like Tipica from Japanese time, and、uh, he also do some like variety exchange with the、uh, Alisan farmer. They are trying to discover new flavors of the、uh, of the of the coffee. Different varieties they have the different the profile the the taste profile. 只有你自己肯改变。Uh, he wants to discover what's the best varieties for his farm. Because every farm has the different farm has the different environment, so he he want to to find which one is a is the best can make the best flavor, best taste for his place. 
。其实如果以我们这个咖啡农的情况下，我们就不会去奢望这一块。那因为。呃，云林古坑这一块，它是结合了有关咖啡的历史、文化，还有产业的部分，所以我们是希望把这段的文化慢慢的把它带上来，好，把它带上来之后，我们再把品质带上来，这个等于是一个平台。那未来卖的，它就是一个呃有关历史、有关文化、有关在地的农。We are in Chaoling right now, and the altitude is about a thousand and eighty meters. We're gonna meet some local farmers and also cup a lot of Chaoling coffee. For today, we're gonna cup uh, 16 samples. So this is the first step of the evaluation. This year, I believe a different process here. I got these two; they are very good. The, uh, these two, they are very good. Like a high fermented coffee, they can smell like the, the mature uh, tropical fruit notes here, and there's some like wine flavors in it. We will have uh, to evaluate the flavor after test, acidity and body. Now we start to evaluate the flavor after taste, acidity and bark. By real, like, like by, by drinking it, yeah. And what does it tell you? Uh, it tastes me about it, uh, the, the, we, it tastes different coffee will taste different for sure, but uh, mostly we will start to evaluate if there's any defect or, or fault in the, in the coffee. Uh, so that's how we, if we find any defect, we will give the feedback to the farmers so they won't do the, the wrong steps or uh, wrong methods again. So after the, the, the defect evaluation, then we will start to appreciate the coffee, determine how good they are. So uh, we will find some, some good coffee that will have the fruit notes or wine notes uh, in, in, the, in the cup. This guy is quite amazing because when I interview other farmers, they all talk about this guy I heard here because they say that he always like, like to share, like to instruct other newcomers to make their life easier. For his coffee, he sells some coffee to New York, a uh, Taiwanese immigrant, and uh, they are looking for some the, the taste of the, their own, the, the, the motherland. This young couple, they will come back from the cities about six years ago and start their own coffee plantation here. 爸爸也年纪已经成长了，好好好，然后也是一样回家，都是槟榔树，都槟榔树，对，然后成成树给别人，然后收割这样子。OK OK， 就是因缘机会之下，然后认识了 Hanger， 然后就开始投入了种植的咖啡。按五成五成的。Here in in mountain, they don't really depends on one job. Actually, they have to do a lot of different work. If he's he's not coming back here, he say his father is almost giving up the the, the farming the, the their own land because there's just no no time and the, the income. I believe is the uh, is too low. They were talking about the kind of history in in, in Chaoling. It was uh, agriculture, and uh, then it switched to tourism, and then. Now the tourism is kind of the, the it's not a popular tourist place, so they kind of between is all they have the tourist but not a lot, they have agriculture but not big, but they try to combine the thing together to make it work. The shortage of the, the, the farmers, they, they is kind of will limit the market. So the here situation is uh, very different from the, the situation in other side, especially for the, the bigger estate like uh, Zhou Zhuyuan or Zhou Wushan. They were they were trying to uh, expand to satisfy the market 
demand, but here we got a small farmers. They are just trying to use coffee as a media to talk about their story, their local story and the local culture. Uh,我发现在餐厅里面有一个问题,就是说,呃,我想要我的时间可以弹性一点。对,然后在我,呃,我这个人比较不喜欢被人家管,呃,希望可以说自己可以决定一些事情。对。所以最后我就选择,呃
，所以我非常珍惜。所以爸爸一定要留给我这块地，就是我，因为因为我才有这块。说有个协会，也是我们跟张大哥、呃、张弟弟、oh, okay. 张弟弟他们一起去学习。This is a cup of organic coffee, and I think that organic agriculture is very, uh, is happening in the in the east coast. I think that if you're doing organic in the in the west coast, it's kind of difficult because the weather is hotter and the you know, the pest control is more difficult. Here is coffee tastes very clean, but to me it's kind of uh too monotone. It's only the some nutty and. I can taste some like apple profile in, in the coffee, but in coffee we are, we are basically looking for some complexity, and the complexity that's the thing that you can improve. The last two thirty years, there has been a tremendous increase in the quality of Taiwanese coffee. Right now, the, the production is not that large, so it's mostly domestic consumption. But the coffee is definitely of a quality that international buyers would be interested in. There just needs to be more of it. The farmers, the producers, they need to understand how to cultivate. Uh, their coffee crops. They need to understand how to care for the coffee crop. They need to understand how to properly harvest the coffee crops. And then, you know, they need to be very rigorous in grading, in selection, so that they send only, you know, the good quality coffee cherries to the processors. And then the processors, right? They need to be sanitary. They need to have the necessary know-how to process the coffee correctly to bring out all its flavor potentials. Really, the industry here right now is looking for uh, special processing, special um, wash, like whether it's a, an anaerobic fermentation and those micro lots. And really, we want to start hearing about the stories about the farmers who are growing, the guys who are processing. Um, traceability is a, a really important factor for the majority of the specialty coffee companies. And so if you can bring that, um, that element of traceability and tell that story about really down to the farmer level, I think that's really where the, the success comes from in, in terms of specialty coffee. It's a very long process and everyone in, in every stage of industry must do his or her job. And if that is all done well, and then the roaster doesn't mess up, the roaster knows how to properly roast the coffee, and then the barista knows how to properly prepare the coffee, then we will have specialty coffee on our hands. Because that's really what it is, right? Specialty coffee is a grade, right? Every coffee that is of a certain grade is specialty. Every coffee that is not of a certain grade is commercial. And how do we improve the grade? Well, you, we, we do a better job. 我觉得这样子的话，要推广到全世界，会相对来讲比较有难度一点。就是如果大家可以呃统合起来，就是联合起来，我觉得或许真的台湾咖啡或外销的一个机会，让呃全世界人都知道台湾有精品咖啡。这样 ，Our mountain sides are extremely steep, so there is very limited farmland that where coffee can actually be grown. I envision Taiwanese coffee kind of in the same way that I think most of the world look at Hawaiian coffee right now. That it's a limited quantity, but specialty gray and you know almost like a boutique kind of product. At the same time, I do believe you know independent coffee shops, right? Um, specialty coffee shops all over the world. Would be interested in sourcing Taiwanese coffee and you know serving it to their patrons, especially those who are open-minded enough to try something different. Our coffee industry is so interested in what the the newest, latest thing is in the industry. You know which countries are growing. It's really about that focus on quality. If you're cupping and scoring 85s, 86s, 87s, 88s, people are getting excited about it. For the past three years, we have been working with the farmers in Adishan. We decided to open a coffee shop that to the promote to sell the Adishan coffee in Taichung. The special thing about the coffee here is that we roast the coffee like a, with the, the automatic machines with the same roast profile. So which means when you come here, that you kind of enjoy the fruits of the farmer instead of the, the artisan steel of the roasters. So you know every, every flavor is different. 
you know that the flavor come from the land, come from the weather, come from the varietals, or come from the farmers. So, I say, maybe I can drink it this week, then I want to drink it next week, or maybe next week I want to drink it. 我可能被别的咖啡店就被买买走了，甚至是咖啡庄园他送给别人了，对，所以说你说会不会期待呢？应该是说我们的客人有没有办法接受说今天很好喝，可是下个月变得味道很不不一定，对，大概是这样。I, I think they also benefit a lot from a, a very very strong and vibrant consumption scene, so that's also another reason the coffee is so good. You have so many roasters that are, I mean, you know, international. Some of the best roasters and baristas in the world are here, and they have local access to these farms to work with them to help guide them what, you know, what the kind of coffees they want to see. We want to provide the local Taiwan coffee bean for customer. We choose the Hualien's coffee bean. It's good to the farmer and good to the local people to have a working, working opportunity. The majority of the the big coffee company in Taiwan, actually, they try to help the Taiwan coffee industry a lot. 其实，在台湾大多数的连锁体系啦，都用比较多国外进口的咖啡豆。那我们路易莎还是会用在地的咖啡豆。在台湾咖啡豆，那因为它的产量没有像外国进口豆那么大、那么大量，所以我们一般会把它用在我们的超越精品或是寻豆师等级。We try to help Luisa to buy more Taiwan coffees to offer the, the market. But uh, in these two years, our coffee farmers' um, production not too big enough to offer the enough bean to Luisa. As more coffee buyers, you know, kind of join uh, in the recognition of Taiwanese coffee, maybe other coffee chains would also change their perception of the, you know, Taiwanese coffee being commercial coffee and end up serving that coffee as their specialty, you know, select uh, merchandise to coffee connoisseurs. The problem about Taiwanese coffee it's like a very labor intensive. The coffee costing is a very huge problem here in Taiwan. In the cost of a green coffee in Taiwan, normally it's like three times or four times yeah, compared to the imported Costa Rica and Colombian, Colombian good coffee. The price the, uh, is more expensive from Taiwan. But I think the flavor is the most important thing because they like the flavor from Africa more than Taiwan. Because it's a high cost of production country they've chosen to really focus on you know high quality and high end of the market um, and so the percentage of their coffees that are very very good just keeps increasing because that's like Hawaii it's a similar challenge we have you know the highest cost of production in the world y you need to have a quality product if you want to be competitive in a, a world landscape and if Taiwan are bringing that that kind of grade of, of coffee and uh, it can create that excitement there's hundred percent a market here there there are people who are very happy to pay very, very big money for good, rare coffee. And you only have to go into Harrods and go and drink some of the coffee there. You're, you're going to pay 200 pounds a, you know, for, a, for, a, for a kilo of coffee. People see that why we show spend time on Taiwanese coffee because of freshness. And uh, for, let's say, for the Panaman coffee, let's say for any of the Panaman coffee here, they harvest about the same time like now and uh, we, after we get a sample, we carve, they prepare for the shipping. When they arrive here, the soonest will be May or July. But for Taiwanese coffee, this amazing coffee from Ali Shan, it just harvest last month. One month ago, this coffee is still in the farm. They were still cherry. Yeah, so after the dry, the process, now they are in Mojo coffee. And actually, they are downstairs serving us a cup of coffee now. So it's like the shortest of the, the travel. Most of the coffee shop, they are get used of the, the averagely low price for the, the foreign coffee. So it's really hard for them to accept the, the, like the, the, the price for the, the Taiwanese coffee. Well, for traditional coffee shop, I think Taiwanese coffee bean the price is way too high. To reduce the, the labor cost, the main thing is about the farming area. 
when you have too small farming area, it, it won't easily to 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 reduce the uh, the, the cost. So for the small farmers in Taiwan, because they keep their farm manageable, so they can basically uh, the family can basically cover all the jobs. So make the uh, labor costs or land costs more more friendly. The, the Taiwan area is like this. It's not really suitable for the large harvest machine, but it's actually suitable for like this personal harvest machine. That kind of uh, harvest machine can reduce the labor costs to like maybe one third. The living standard here is a lot higher than in other coffee producing countries. I mean, I have been visiting them. I know how bad the situation, how bad the environment, how, ba how bad the everything is over there. So basically that uh, we are consuming them instead of you know, giving them the fair price. So for me, that I try to promote the idea that the price of Taiwanese coffee is expensive because it's reflecting the, the true value of the human rights and uh, labor rights and the environmental uh, protection and everything. So it kind of makes the price higher than the foreign coffee. Uh, price is not the key problem for our local farmer or um, people in coffee industry to introduce Taiwan coffee to our consumer because um, different uh, products will find different consumer market. One of the reasons why Yunnan coffee isn't so well known in Britain at the minute is because the prices are really quite prohibitive. Uh, you'll be paying upwards of 80 yuan per kilo, which for a lot of people on a commercial basis is not doable really. Um, this is why I've decided to take the track of actually specialising in Yunnan coffee, creating something that's more not just showcasing the coffee, but showcasing everything to do with Yunnan, showcasing everything to do with the sustainability efforts, the biodiversity and the people involved. And um, coming to places like this gives me that platform to share the taste. Uh, who can say no to a cup of coffee? The Taiwanese palate is not really used to the Robusta coffee because this is not really a cold country, it's a tropical country. So what they try to like, uh, what they like most is from the Africa or the South American coffee. Taiwan people, they love the coffee being from Africa more than from Taiwan because the flavor. Taiwan's uh, customer, they actually have a very high understanding about the specialty coffee. So they naturally, they, they can, they always want to buy the high quality coffee. And of course the Geisha coffee are the one of their target. In the city, they are familiar with this kind of flavor because they, they drink a lot of Panama Geisha or Costa Rican Geisha as well. Local drinkers, they don't like this kind of flavor because it's very uh, bright, it's very acid, and the people always think it's the juice instead of a coffee. Sometimes they brew this, just give them to drink for free. They still prefer typical coffee. And we know that in specialty coffee, we are trying to say you know, the fruit variety, the, the, the fruit note of floral notes, but it's just not familiar to, to other, other people. In our experience, if a consumer can taste two or three kinds of coffee at one time, most of people can easily tell something different between this maybe different variety or different um, process coffee flavors. So I think a consumer can be ed educated Local customers prefer the typical medium roast because it's, uh, it gives it a, a naughty or caramony uh, taste profile and it's, um, it's uh, tastes a richer order that fits their image of the, the, of the cup of coffee. This is typical. For me, I, I think this is a very popular kind of taste. So it, it, it fits your uh, uh, image of the, a cup of good coffee. It's relatively easy to convince the, the Taiwan customers to drink our local coffee. 
we have a good product, but customers don't know. So we have to educate them, or we have to promote them. Because the world is selling, so you have to sell the Chaolin region. 整个台湾地区的咖啡名声打出去是一件不容易的事情呐、啊，要让全世界知道台湾咖啡是一个很好的东西，需是漫长的路，对，需要慢慢执行这样。那我们平 Taiwanese coffee is very competitive, so I think, uh, with more like you know media, media exposure or you know social, social media and you know physical events like this, we can promote more. Uh, information to the mass media in Taiwan. The media is very important in promoting our efforts to strengthen Taiwan's specialty coffee industry, to better the lives of Taiwanese coffee producers, to you know facilitate the cooperation between the public sector and the private sector. 其实，呃，推广台湾咖啡会不会增加我们门店的收入？其实一定会啦，因为路易莎毕竟它产品蛮多元化了，从早餐、中餐到下午茶的糕点都有。所以，当消费者看到我们在行销这个台湾咖啡的时候，他如果想要尝试看看，他会进来我们门店来喝这杯台湾咖啡，那一定会增加我们额外的一些营收，比如。We have uh, strong links to our land. We have strong links to our farmers, and from the uh, the the farm to the the coffee shop, it's not far away. So I think it's easy to convince our customers in Taiwan to drink the high quality coffee. 我认为像这样子比较精品、比较高单价的咖啡，它未来的市场会呃市场的接受度会越来越高。因为很多消费者他一开始不知道怎么喝咖啡，或者是不懂怎么喝咖啡的时候，他一定都是找随手可得，甚至价格比较便宜，但是他一定会越喝越好。About ten percent of coffee drinkers drink specialty coffee, so the other ninety percent, you know,、uh, make do with commercial grade coffee. Most of coffee shops they don't decide to sell this kind of premium product. I think that's it,、uh, kind of like the bottleneck when we try to promote this、uh, good coffee to other coffee shops. In Taiwan, doing the coffee farming is actually very difficult to predict everything. It's in December now, and、uh, we should not see the flower in the on, on the coffee tree. Is the flower the coffee flower normally show up in in March and April, but it's only in December. So the weather really messes it up. 呃，然后另外一个部分就是，现在天气其实其实越来越热了，那所以说，呃，我觉得咖啡的品质可能也是大家越来越重越高山，那所以说，种比较低海拔的咖啡，可能相对来讲竞争力就比较越越的。The weather is killing us. You, you know, the, the weather is killing everything. I say the the life the life of the, the coffee plantation would be longest would, would be less than 20 years. I, I, it's not like a, in my opinion, it's happening in the world. It's happening in other places. People have to grow the coffee in higher and higher places. It's not about the the lower places. It's not about the the, the flavor from the lower place. It's more like the, the if you grow a coffee in these kind of places. You sweat, you feel kind of warm. The bugs like them too. The germs like them too. Fungus like them too. So they need they need to do、uh, more work to to manage the farm. But what's going to happen after ten, twenty years? Oh, they get robusta. There's a less. It's a less delicious. But if you are still looking for the coffee flavors, you know, robusta can still stand. <laughs> 快在农政单位。He's not that depressing about the、uh, the climate change because he really thinks that the、uh, coffee is an agricultural product that reflects the land, reflects the weather. So even later, the weather might change, climate might change, but it will still grow coffee. It won't taste as good, but it still reflects the the, the land and the weather. I'm from Japan. Many Japanese people think Brazil, like Panama, Costa Rica. Their coffee more popular, so I think now, still now, Taiwan's coffee.
compared with other countries, not so popular. But today we have some special guests from Hokkaido, from Japan. They have a curious about the Taiwanese coffee industry and also curious about the Taiwanese local producing co coffee. Uh, this is the very first time to experience Lakawan coffee, so um, we are looking forward to taste more, since it's very new for me. Definitely, the geisha is has a very elegant and a bright, uh, with lots of sweet, and uh, the SL34 is also very like a, like a powerful, very interesting. Mr. Godo from the different culture, different country, but he scored totally so, almost the same with the other uh, event we host in the COE scale. So we can check, we don't, we don't, we don't do any cheating, but however, we can tell Mr. Godo with the same value idea in mind with our corporate in Taiwan. Many Japanese people like bitter coffee, so I came to Taiwan and I tried to drink Taiwan coffee for the first time. I thought Taiwan coffee is more sweet and more sour. That's, uh, but it's more easy to drink coffee. The British reaction to coffee in China has generally been a sense of, I'd like to say confusion, it's always surprise. Um, China is historically associated with green tea. And whilst tea and coffee flow perfectly together in a sentence, the idea that a place that grows tea is also growing coffee doesn't quite click yet. So what I've found is a lot of people either have not heard of Yunnan coffee at all, or the ones that have, unfortunately, only associate it with quite low quality coffee. We need more young people to join us. Most of our farmers, they are more than 50 or 60 years old. It's a very important question. We, we need more, more young people to join us. Not only in coffee industry, but also um, uh, the other kind of agriculture field, also we will have this problem that the older farmer retire, that we need more younger men to enjoy in agriculture side. In Guqing, they are teaching children coffee at school. It's a program teach the elementary school student about coffee. So now what he's doing is the uh, uh, coffee process. Students will learn how to cup, evaluate the coffee. The kids uh, should not drink coffee. So how they train the coffee, the, the, their kids to cup is to it's like uh, follow the international protocols. We drink it and spit it. So in your gym, you will like to go to drink coffee? Yes, you will drink coffee. You will drink coffee. If we can sell uh, these beans, then all of this will disappear. So I think uh, I really, really worry, worry about the future of like, these coffee beans. Uh, it's now or never, so that's why I go back here uh, to support my family, my father and mom, to plant it. Coffee farmers, they have its own pride to producing coffee. They think the, the producing coffee is a good job, and so that they want to let their own children to take over his parents' business. In coffee industry, we also can see now more and more younger people come back to their hometown and uh, join coffee industry. They are open with open mind to get uh, new information, new knowledge, and uh, willing to try to experiment. The government not really give a lot of support to the, in the coffee industry, but uh, they do give a lot of support to the farmers. In recent years, the government has some program to train the local farmers how to cut the coffee. Farmer association, they have the budget, get the, the budget from the government, uh, and uh, they hire the, the coppers, instructors. I think the government could do more to help you. Government 
台湾咖啡它在台湾的农业这个产业里面，它是属于呃。比较没有那么高经济价值的做，而且种植的面积也比其他的作物还要来得少，所以在农业单位它比较没有注重这个区块。有一些农呃那个肥料补助啊，啊，肥料补助啊，当然它也广告比较重要，也是有帮我们推广台湾咖啡啦，对，也是还是有帮我们的。Government are doing something， 嗯、呃。We believe they try to help us, but、uh, I think、uh, the 成效 effect, but the effect is very is very bad. We can't、uh, feel anything help helpful. So、um, so far, we just do it by ourselves. Does government have a role in terms of helping to、uh, deliver the coffee? That question is an easy one for me to answer because absolutely yes. I get calls from、uh, government representation within Peru, within Ecuador, and actually those connections that are are being forged、uh, through those expos or those trade programs, government-led programs, reaching out to roasters and to importers, exporters here in these markets is absolutely key because, you know, yes, the world's smaller and we can bring in smaller amounts, but really it's、uh, it, it helps to grease the wheels and really kind of deliver a a.、Um, You know, a, a stronger trading relationship and one that's almost protected, and, and they kind of help. You know, when when the conversation goes a bit quiet, the government can help,、uh, or representation、uh, can help, kind of just pick up that conversation again and, and get things over the line. So, yeah, without a doubt, if government can help support the farmers there, they should 100% do that. Taiwan coffee should、uh, should should have a system like、uh, other country like Blue Mountain.、Uh, we have to. Fight together, not just、uh, you know.、Uh, you have your own brand, and you have your own brand. That's good, but we have to fight together. We have to make it make it bigger. Nowadays, the、uh, the coffee industry around the world is actually changing so fast. We have a lots of high technology peoples. We have the resource here. So it's we have a great opportunities to become like、uh, coffee technology centers in Taiwan. Taiwan is known for technology and equipment. We have used that technology to make perfect coffee machine. Taiwanese coffee don't have that history and the quantity to serve worldwide. So I think why don't we just use Taiwanese best IT industry to implement robot、uh, in the coffee shop and then introduce to the world? The future could be great. I think there just needs to be more coffee and more awareness of that coffee. The future of Taiwan coffee will be really specialized,、um, very small quantity, and it will be really tasty. Actually, the most important thing is about the passion. If we have a passion and we want to share our knowledge and the technology to the people, we can make success. What we will all like to see, right,、um, is if 100% of Taiwanese coffee is specialty coffee. But obviously, I don't think any country can make that claim. That is just impossible. But we would like to see an increase of the quantity of specialty coffee, an increase in the percentage of specialty coffee from all the coffee that's grown and cultivated locally. And I think that will ultimately serve the Taiwanese coffee industry well. The world of coffee、uh, is rapidly evolving, right?、Uh, we believe that、uh, with automation,、uh, it is the key to to staying ahead of curve. Diligence. Is built into the culture within within China, Taiwan, Japan. Anyway, as far as the, as we, we're concerned, so we're not concerned about process in a very crowded market. Produce and maybe experiment with coffees that are, you know,、uh, fermentation and and things like that are producing a very unique cup, and then giving the ability to really trace back to, to the farmers, let the farmers tell their story. I think if you do that well, I think you you can create a buzz that people will attach to.